How do they do it? We've all asked ourselves this very same question. How does your local Chinese takeaway cook a full meal in 10 minutes or less? In this episode, I'll share the secrets from behind the kitchen door. Shrimp chop suey, a recipe developed over 100 years ago as a taste of the Orient for the Western palate. My fillet beef, green pepper and black beans, a homage to my chefing days working in my dad's restaurant, The Panda, way back in the late 80s. For starters, let's cook my seriously creamy chicken and sweet corn soup. In less than 10 minutes, you're going to be slurping on this hearty takeaway favourite. My stock is on boiling away already. I have a piece of chicken which I've pre-boiled. The only reason I've done that is I like shredded chicken on the top of mine. So when I dunk my prawn crackers in, I can pick up a bit of chicken and stuff it in this big old juicy mouth of mine. So, cream corn. If you don't have cream corn, get a tin of sweet corn from home, whack it through the blender for about 10 seconds and you'll have cream corn. In this goes into my now boiling chicken stock. And we'll just give that a quick mix. We'll turn the heat up. We want to get it up to the boil as fast as possible. I'm going to add just a tiny pinch of salt at this stage because we have added stock, therefore it will be salty already. White pepper, really important for this dish. It adds a background heat. So when you're eating it, you're getting that warm glow sensation. Now, while that soup's coming up to the boil, I'm gonna mix my corn flour and water. Don't use hot water, because it will go lumpy and gloopy. Once this soup is boiling, we're near enough ready to go. That's how quick this is. So this dish literally cooks in minutes. In the restaurant, this was a favorite and it was ordered every single day of the week. We're open seven days a week. Um, but yeah, I can't remember a day that we didn't sell sweet corn soup. Now, it's really important I stir as I add my corn flour. The reason being is it will go lumpy. But providing I keep the liquid moving, It'll be smooth, it'll be creamy, it'll be as thick as you want because you're in control of how much corn flour you add. So that's thick enough for me. So you can just see it's like thick cream, I guess. So off goes the heat. Let's give it a quick taste for seasoning. Seasoning spot on, which is normally the case because I've been doing this a long time. Um, I've just got some frozen peas. Um, they have defrosted. If you are using frozen peas, add them in a little bit earlier just to make sure they're warm through. So in go my peas. And then the very, very last thing I've got to do, and this is why it's called egg drop soup in some restaurants and in America, is that I'm going to add two whisked eggs and I'm going to be stirring at the same time. And as I stream it in, it's going to fleck throughout the soup and just thicken it even more so. Okay, right then. Let me just add a couple of big spoonfuls. And you can see the green really just helps bring this dish alive. Pop that to one side. I'm going to add a few slices of shredded chicken. Now this is still warm from when I cooked it earlier. And we're just going to arrange these around the bowl. And we're going to finish off with a little tiny drizzle of sesame oil, which is just going to give it that nice nutty note. And the last thing to do is to give it a proper try. So get yourself a prawn cracker, dip it in, Fantastic. Did you know that chop suey is in the top five of the most ordered dishes in Chinese takeaways? Created by the chef to the Chinese ambassador who was hosting a dinner party for his American guests in the mid 1800s. The chef took a mix of Chinese and Western ingredients, blending them together to create a dish both tasty yet familiar to both parties. Now, this dish has been on the Western dinner table for well over 100 years. I can see why, because it's using seasonal produce, so the veggies that you can use um, from your garden, 
or from you've been to the market and you've picked up some bits and bobs. Chop suey basically is an amalgamation of Chinese and Western ingredients thrown into a wok and then tasting fantastic. So like always in a Chinese kitchen, you have to get things ready. So I have some shrimps, I've got some bean sprouts, I've got some carrots, which I just need to finish chopping, which I do now quickly. My wok is already on the stove getting nice and hot. Like all cooking in a kitchen, and we've got to make sure that the wok is smoking away and stuff. So I can turn this up now because I'm ready to go. The star ingredients are our lovely bean sprouts. Now, my mum, back in the 60s, well, early 60s, used to grow bean sprouts in a bathtub because you couldn't readily buy them for the restaurant. So out back, they used to have bathtubs and um, my mum would grow the bean sprouts ready for the restaurant for serving. And um, just so you wonder why I'm and my whole entire family are obsessed with food because uh, we went to great lengths just to get the ingredients. So wok is smoking. I'm gonna add a tablespoon and a bit, I guess, of oil. Now we can throw the veggies in in any order we want. I'm gonna leave the bean, sp bean sprouts out until, until towards the end because I want them to be nice and crispy. So let's get the onion in, followed by the carrot. And we'll just give this a really, really quick stir over. Now we want the wok to be hot because we're looking at trying to get this caramelization on the ingredients straight away. I don't want them to be overcooked. Stir frying isn't about stewing our vegetables or stewing our produce. It's about cooking it really quick so we still get that crunch. In goes my spring onion. And then once I've getting, I'm getting that fragrant aromatic smell from the spring onion, I'm gonna add my shrimp. Now these are just normal frozen shrimps. I've allowed them to defrost and they're drained. So I'm gonna add, oh, you know what? Let's be a gutty and yeah, add it all. There's a massive bowl of shrimps that have gone in there. And we'll just keep on touching this. We keep on moving the ingredients. Like I said, I don't wanna overcook the product or overcook the vegetable. So I just wanna keep it moving. In go my bean sprouts. Now, when we cook with bean sprouts, there's a natural peppery taste. So we're gonna elevate that by using the white pepper again. Now, the Chinese use white pepper rather than black pepper in most of the dishes because it's not too harsh. We just get that background heat without all the bits, if that makes sense. So there's my white pepper. A little bit of salt. There's just a pinch of salt going in. Now, you need to balance the saltiness with the, with the sweetness. So the sweetness of the carrots, the sweetness of the onion, the sweetness of the shrimp, even. This is why we're adding a good pinch of sugar. Now we're gonna add some stock, whether that's fish stock, vegetable stock, chicken stock, that's completely up to you. Let's give it all a good stir. And now we need to inject a bit of colour and umami into this dish. So I'm going to grab my dark soy sauce, which is naturally sweet. It's going to help with the colour. And I'm going to add in about half a tablespoon. And we're going to give that a mix. And as soon as we come up to the boil, we're going to thicken and the dish is ready. So this is one of those midweek Chinese takeaway snacks that you can cook at home. Everything is pre-done and you could buy pre-cut onions, pre-cut spring onions, and it can literally be on your table in about eight or nine minutes. So while that's coming to the boil, let's grab my corn flour and water. Now this is the thickening agent of choice. Well, the Chinese choice, should I say. In every single restaurant and takeaway I've ever worked in, we've always used this as a thickener. Now I go onto these forums and other cookbooks and they're using potato starch and other starches. I've never known anything other than corn flour and water to thicken the dishes. So that's what I'm using. Like always guys, keep it moving. Otherwise it will go lumpy. And we're gonna add in about a tablespoon to start off with. And we want this sauce to be thick enough that it coats our veggies and our shrimps. So a little tiny splash more. Perfect. And that's it. Off goes the heat. Let's get some of this vegetable. 
Now I say, I've used onion, spring onion, carrots, bean sprouts. You could use whatever you want. Obviously a chop suey is bean sprouts, so make sure there's bean sprouts in it, but you can use any veggies that you can buy at your local supermarket or market to create your own style. And like always guys, we finish off with a little drizzle of sesame oil, which makes it really Cantonese. And I am gonna give this a go because my mouth is salivating and it smells fantastic. Perfect midweek snacking. Who needs a Chinese takeaway when we can knock up dishes like this at home? Mom and dad had this fantastic Chinese restaurant called The Panda, and I started working on the woks when I was about 13 years old. I can still vividly remember the smell of this fantastic dish. The rich, pungent fragrance that the black beans create when they hit that wok is unmistakable. I learned how to chef at The Panda, and um, there's a groovy little picture here of me in my comfy little tracksuit with my white hat and apron, so yeah, this is my beef and black bean Cantonese style because we were a Cantonese restaurant. And um, the guy that's standing next to me in that picture, his name was Ben, fantastic chef from Hong Kong. And I learned quite a lot from that guy there. Um, I've got in some ingredients out already. Um, I do need to grab my chopping board. So what we're gonna do, we're just gonna pop a wet cloth under my board, which should help stop it from moving around too much. Let's grab my chopper. I need my spoon, I need my wok. Now in a Chinese restaurant, we'd always use a ladle. When you cook at home and you get your nice non-stick wok, you can't use this because it, would, it ruins the material. And even though this is like forever, it's supposed to stay non-stick forever, if you start scraping around with this, it, it would ruin it. Um, now the ingredients, we have green peppers, we have some garlic, carrots, onion, and some chilies. This is beef, green pepper, chili, and black bean. Black bean is really unique. And you know what? I've never eaten another cuisine anywhere that has this pungent smell. And it's a really salty, pungent, fermented smell. And it's, like I say, it's just unique to say the least. Um, I'm gonna use about two tablespoons. Now, with the dried black beans, you do need to give them a quick rinse. Um, if you don't, you could be eating your dish and you'll get like a little stone chip or a little bit of grit in there. So I'm just gonna come over here, give them a quick, a quick rinse, pop my fingers over the top and I'm just gonna pour it out, fill it with a little bit of warm water and I'm just gonna mush the black beans together. This only takes a couple of minutes, but it makes such a difference. And there's my black beans ready. Just rinse my hand off again. Uh, we're also gonna need some light soy sauce and dark soy sauce. Now the light soy sauce, um, which is, there you go. I'll give the bottle a swish. It's, it's light and it's, it's thin, so it moves around. Light soy sauce is for seasoning. So there's my light. The dark soy sauce, if you look, you give it a little swish around, it stays clinging to the bottle because it's a lot thicker, sweeter, a lot more umami in this one as well. So, you can edit out the so. <laughs> I got told off by the cameraman earlier for saying so too much. Anyways, my pepper. I'm gonna take out my seeds and I'm literally just pulling the seeds out. I'm gonna chop them into cubes that one done. Onions are chopped exactly the same way as my peppers, so they're cubes. Now for a little bit of colour and sweetness, we're just going to add some carrot slices. Now chilies. You can DC these if you want to. Um, I don't think you need to. Um, the, the heat comes from the vein that runs along the chili, in which I'll show you actually. 
So if we just chop one of these in half. So I don't know if you can see that vein just there, but that's where the heat is. So the seeds don't actually make a lot of difference to the heat. Now, we always serve this with the seeds. So that's how I'm gonna do it. And normally we would have used green bird's eye chilies as well. One thing you need to remember, don't rub your eyes after doing this because you will be sorry. And for gentlemen, if you go to the bathroom, make sure you wash your hands properly because you will end up with a sore pee-pee. <laughs> so garlic, we're gonna just peel. And I've just done that by crushing it a little bit. I give this another bit of a smash and we'll chop the garlic roughly. I'm ready to start walking. So on goes my walk. Beef and black bean. This is a salty dish. So it would go really well with like a honey and lemon chicken or a sweet and sour king prawn. So these dishes are meant to be served in the middle of the table and we take pieces and we just eat them a bit at a time. Right, my wok is getting hot. Let's grab some oil. I reckon a tablespoon and a bit would be plenty. Let's pop this back over there. Now, before I get my garlic in, I'm just gonna pop my onions in. This is just gonna help me ensure that I don't burn my garlic. And I'll pop my garlic in with the onion and I'm gonna give this a really quick mix. And straight away we're getting that caramelization because the wok is hot and that pungent smell along with the pepper. I don't like my beef cooked too, too well. So I'm not gonna add it in just yet. I'm gonna add in my carrot. Now in goes my beef. So I'm just gonna clear the bottom of the wok a little bit. And I'm just gonna sear off that beef on the bottom. This will not take very long to cook. I've chopped the beef into really small slivers. Now for that pungent black bean. So give us a quick another mix. I'm gonna grab my black beans. You could put the liquid in, a little bit of liquid in as well. We don't need to really at this stage. And there's that familiar smell that I get. This takes me right back to the panda. The only thing missing now is the roar of the fans and the roar of the, uh, of the fire that's underneath. But the clanging of the pans and the hustle and bustle. Okay, chili. Now you could have got the chili in a bit earlier. This, is, this may make me cough and I do apologize if I start coughing on camera. So I'm gonna add in my chili. There's that heat. And I'm just gonna cook out the rawness before I add my stock. And then we can get in with the wets. And this will make you cough and sneeze a little. So it might be a good idea when you're cooking this at home to open the windows and doors. Okay, so veggies are crunchy still. I've got to be quick. I'll get in maybe a cup of stock. Now we can go in with the seasoning. So I'm going to have a pinch of pepper. I mean, a pinch of salt, sorry, because it is a salty dish with some sugar. And there's a good, probably a tablespoon of sugar that's gone in this, but I am just going to balance that saltiness out. Then we need a splash of light soy sauce and I'm going to add in about half a tablespoon followed by about half a tablespoon again of dark soy sauce. So there's that rich brown colour that you see is so familiar with this dish. I'm just going to give it a quick taste. See, I think that's about right. So my cornflour water. 
So we had a massive bowl of this next to the cooker. In fact, all the ingredients used to be served, well, they were all in like big bowls along the back of the range. So, so you can just literally dip your spoon in, get a bit of this, a bit of that, and a bit of something else. Okay, remembering to stir at the same time as we add this. And I'm, again, I'm gonna thicken the sauce just enough so it clings to each of these pieces of ingredients. And that goes off. Right then, I have made a bit of a mess. And this is it, you see how quick that was? Everything happened so quick, there's just no time to stop. And you do get a bit of a sweat on. I'm gonna serve this in this lovely dish actually. This is a hot pot dish, but it looks the part. In fact, I am gonna use my Chinese ladle because I can get a big scoop of this succulent, juicy beef. And you know, there isn't a smell that even comes close to this. And this just screams Panda restaurant. 13 year old me with my little chef hat on. Nostalgia in a bowl. So now you can see how your local Chinese takeaway can use those two iconic words, 10 minutes and mean it.